This is All About Wine, the talk show dedicated to the wine industry since 2009. Featuring winemaker, cellar master, vineyardist, and tasting expert, Ron. Basically what we're trying to do on this program is just trying to educate people and trying to make wine less confusing and more friendly. From coast to coast and around the world. You know, we really have had some some neat people on the program. I, I just, I love that. Post your questions and comments during the live show on our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash allaboutwinebtr. Again, that's www.facebook.com forward slash allaboutwinebtr. And now, All About Wine is on. Here's Ron. Well, okay. Okay. Well, actually, Ron is uh, not here, and I'm not sure. Yeah, I think my audio is going out. Uh, Let me uh, bring our guest on. I believe he's uh, already on the line. He's been on for a bit. Uh, This is Mike with you, uh, and uh, um, I'm. I believe Ron is out there somewhere, but uh, he's having maybe having some uh, issues. So hold on just a second. Let me uh, um, try and bring him on here. It should say that he's on. Are you there? Can you hear me? Adam? Kinda. Hi. Good. You can hear me? <laughs> okay. Uh, I can hear you all right. Yeah, uh, how are you? Sorry about that. Good. Uh, yeah, this is, this is Mike. I'm usually the... Um, uh, producer, behind the scenes person, and Ron is the host. And uh, I'm not sure where, uh, where, what happened to him. He, he, I know we had some major storms yesterday uh, evening, and I'm not sure if that might have uh, taken him out. We had a power outage here for, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of times, and uh, but uh, he he might have been affected by that. I'm not real sure. So uh, I I saw you on hold, and I thought, well, let me see if I can get in and. Uh, get you on the air so here we are um so i'll try and uh, wing it until you know if, if he gets up and running or or what happens um but uh thursday show that's what we were talking about we're like hey we're gonna be on sunday yay you know it's gonna be a, a morning time something different for us and all all ready for it and, and then yesterday night it just i don't know the storms were just terrible but uh, uh hopefully he's okay and everything's everything's good there i just haven't heard from him yet uh, so we have uh, on the phone here, uh, on the line, we have Adam Williams. You are the sales uh, director, sales manager, sales director, uh, Balfour Winery? Yeah, sales director. Yeah, okay. And Correct, yeah, Balfour. Yeah, uh, so, and you're not in the States. You're on the other side of the pond, <laughs> which is, uh, we've had a few guests like that before, but it's been a while and it's, it's unusual, but the, the, because of the time difference here, we are on Sunday. So, uh, Sunday morning, uh, it, it seemed to be convenient for, uh, for everybody around, at least what we were told. So, uh, here we are and, uh, welcome to the show. If you would, um, just, uh, I, I think I already told everybody who you were, but, uh, who you are again and, and, uh, where you are would be good. Just let us know. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, well, firstly, thanks for having me on, Mike. Yeah, it's uh, so it's lunchtime here, in, in I'm in London at the moment. I live in London, um, and our winery um, is in Kent, so the very southeast of, of the country. So I'm the sales director for Balfour. So I've been, you know, in the, in the wine industry for you know over twenty years, and um, a lot of that in Champagne. But for the last six or seven years, I've been, yeah, I've been working with English wine, which has been very exciting. Wow. Okay. Uh, so over, <clears throat> excuse me, over uh, uh, twenty years, and and all in uh, all in uh, England in that area. Yeah. So I worked for a large retailer over here first, and did my wine exams, and you know after leaving uh, university college, not really knowing what to do, but I went into so I ended up in the wine industry, which is what happens to a lot of people when they don't know what to do. And then I worked for uh, Mert Hennessy for, for some time. So uh, working with Krug and Don Perignon and Ruinar and Veuve Clico and some fantastic brands like that. So, um, you know, which was, a, which was a brilliant experience. But, you know, I, you know English wine is, is, you know, the excitement and the, and the growth of English wine has is, is been, I've always kept my eye on. So joining in this one, which is about seven years ago, <coughs> and even seven years ago, it was, 
Yeah, it's still a very small industry. Not many people were talking about it. Not many people had been um, had tasted it. We weren't exporting any wines, but I always saw the potential for for English wine, and so it was a really exciting, um, exciting place to be. So you know, as soon as I saw an opportunity and, uh, and found a company who who wanted my expertise, I, I, I jumped at it, and it's been it's been a, a roller coaster ride. But something you know, if I if I think about where we've come from in those seven years as an industry it's you know we've come on so quickly and there's a you know huge huge growth ahead which is you know ahead of us which is exciting too yeah that's that's fantastic um that's that's the kind of trend that we'd like to hear about <laughs> so that's that's always a good thing um you said wine exams so are you, do you have certifications or um what what wine again yeah, exams so, so, yeah, the, the WSCT, I'm not sure if you, you know, you have mm-hmm. WSCT over there, wine and spirits education <coughs> trust. So, um, all the, all the, all the exams up to diploma, um, I decided to stop before doing my master of wine. Um, I wanted to keep some sanity, so I, I stopped before, <laughs> uh, going, going into that. But yeah, all, all the way up to diploma, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, congratulations. That's yeah. We have we've heard of and uh, have talked to people about the um, WSETs and and uh, it, it's a process for sure. It's not um, it's it's not a simple feat for to to gain. Um, a lot of work goes into that. Um, so how Absolutely. long how long have you been with uh, Balfour? You said was it seven? So I've been with Balfour for about six or seven years. Um, so when I joined um, Balfour, when Balfour planted their first vineyard in 2002, so the winery's been going for, you know, it's our 20th anniversary this year. Um, but really, only is, um, when I joined um, in uh, yeah six or seven years ago, we were still, you know, a relatively small winery. And actually, you know, most English wineries were relatively small then. Um, we were making, you know, 100,000 bottles, something like that, selling to retail only doing a little bit of exports. Um, we're now probably sort of the third or fourth biggest um, English winery and making sparkling and still. So that's, you know, a lot of growth over that time. But that's, you know, alongside alongside the rest of the industry as well, which, is, which has been growing as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any other, uh, I was trying to go to the, uh, I found the website here. So you do, uh, you do regular wine and you do sparkling or is it strictly uh, sparklings? Yeah, correct. Yeah, we make we make sparkling and still. So um, mm-hmm. about thirty percent of our production is still wine, and about seventy percent is sparkling. Um, not all English wineries make still wines. Um, mm-hmm. You know, some dedicate themselves solely to sparkling, um, and there's um, some wineries that make a little bit of still. We've always seen um, real potential and a future for English still wines, right from right from when we started. So. Um, Aaron Elias, our, um, our head winemaker, who's been making English wine for 30 years, has always seen the potential for English wine. So we've, you know, made sure we're planting the right vines, the right clones in the right places to make great quality, you know, English English wine, English still wine. I think, you know, if the still wine is made as a secondary to the sparkling, the, the quality is there. But if you're planting the right clones in the right places, I think there's. There's some superb examples of, of English what English still wine mm-hmm. um, to go alongside. You know the sparklings, which you know the reputation for our sparkling wines as an industry now is um, is, is there now. We were certainly in, in, in the UK. You know it's accepted that the quality of the, of the, of the traditional method English sparkling wines is is right up there with you know with anything you can get from other countries. And um, the still the, the the perception of the still wine is a little bit behind that. It's two or three years behind that. But again, in the last year or so, um, probably longer than that, two or three years, that people are really acknowledging the potential and the quality of, of, of English stills. Light, light-bodied English stills. We ours are predominantly Chardonnay and, and Pinot Noir. Uh, sorry, Pinot Noir. We actually made a still Pinot Noir as well. But um, predominantly those, those grape varieties. Hmm. Okay. And what sort of uh, what sort of grapes do you have there? What what is your primary? Or... Yeah, so on we we on our estate we we plant four main grape varieties: so Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier for our sparklings. But we also have a lot of bur- that Champagne clones. But we also have a lot of Burgundy clones for for still wines. We have a, a, <clears> some, <throat> um, a grape variety called Bacchus. 
Bacchus is a, a, an interesting grape variety. You see a lot in the in the UK. It's a hybrid grape um, from um, there's some Melitergo in there. There's a bit of Riesling in there. It makes a very uh, expressive um, uh, still white. You see it sometimes in sparkling, but predominantly still uh, still white. Mm. So it's th- those four grape varieties. Um, we've also planted a little bit of Pinot Blanc. Um, we've got a little bit of Arban and Petit Meslier um, on this day. Arban and Petit Meslier are, you know, old traditional Champagne grape varieties. They're, they're, they're two of the seven permitted Champagne grape varieties. So we have a, a small amount of that planted on the estate, which make, uh, which we put into our sparklings and some of our stills, which are very interesting. Oh. Um, we've planted some Albarino, we've planted some Gamay, we've planted more Petit Meslier, because I think that's a really interesting grape variety for the future. So there's a there's a range of different grape varieties, but you know the, the majority is the three core Champagne grape varieties that, uh, that you'd expect. Nice. Yeah, mm, last... Uh Last Thursday, we were talking, uh, we just kind of touched the surface of uh, hybrid grapes, and uh, there, we were saying that the hybrids uh, could be the grapes of the future. I remember uh, Ron was talking about mm-hmm. that, and it was uh, kind of interesting. And uh, I thought he mentioned that uh, that particular Bacchus, uh, Bacchus? yeah, uh, hybrid grape. So uh, yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting how it uh, <laughs> kind of related to, you just said that. I go, hey, we just talked about that. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. It, it's a great variety, quite well known here. People will, you know, yeah. will drink and then enjoy a lot of Bacchus. Some people refer to it as sort of like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc, which is, I think is not not quite so true, but you know there's certainly similarities with that mm-hmm. with that grape variety. Our our climate here is is is, is you know is, is suited to the you know the traditional grape varieties that, um, at the moment. So I think you know as a, as a country moving away, we're moving away from hybrids, mm-hmm. which were you know planted quite a lot in the 70s and 80s because uh-huh. they were they were easier to grow and the yields were higher. As you know, we're moving back towards um you know viniferous um uh, varieties like chardonnay and pinot noir oh okay um let's see yeah i was just going to ask you uh about that that area that you're in uh about the climate is it is it warm do you have uh, bad winters is it uh you know what what kind of elevation are we talking is, is it uh Rolling hills and all that. Uh, yeah. What's it like out there? Yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think everyone, anyone's ever called England warm. Um, <laughs> it might be for one or two days a year. Um, so we're, you know, we're cool climate. You know, we're getting warmer. Um, obviously, with, 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 with climate change, and that's one of the reasons why you see more high quality. Um, you know, wines out of this country, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it's it's a, it's in a, you know, it's just, in a way, it's a sad thing to say, but that is you know, that is the truth. There's a lot. There's a lot more factors than, than that. Sometimes people think yeah. it's just you know just the change in, in climate, and there's there's certainly more factors than that. But you know we're still cool climate, and there's a lot of vintage variation. We've just um, had a had a pretty cool vintage in 2021, and we suffered from you know a lot of the issues that, that France had in 2021, like Chablis. You know we you know it was a cool wet year, so you know our yields can go up and down considerably depending on on, on the conditions of that year and mm. um, 2018 was a, was a brilliant year quality and quantity it was mm. it was perfect and you know vintages like that you, you see um you know the wines that come out of it of, of years like that are, they're superb winters are, aren't too much of a problem we don't go particularly cold um certainly not cold enough to to do any damage in the vineyards but it's times now we've had a relatively warm few weeks um, now, so obviously we're all on, on frost watch at the moment. Um, it, it, touch wood, everything looks fine at the moment. But you know, this is the, the, the key time for us. Um, your frosts uh, in, in, in spring and autumn, and you know, if it's too wet in summer, they're, they're our biggest they're our biggest concerns. Mm. Um, and, and yields but yields will go up and down accordingly. Um, so there are yeah there are big uh, big climatical factors but we you know we we've, we've had a, you know a run of, of, of good vintages 2017 we were hit by a bad frost that hit, that took out a lot of the vineyards in in France as well so we the, the conditions we have on to you know on to December we 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 have the same issues that you know, much of France do as well yeah. Uh, what about? Um, do you have any any issues with? Um, um, we have we have like uh, 
insects that attack the vines here, uh, bugs, insects, do you have uh, those same kind of issues there with uh, like a, we have a glassy wing sharpshooter and, and there's just all kinds of um, insects out here that uh, go after the vines and you have to keep uh, watch on that as well. Do you have those issues there? Yeah, a little bit. I think I think less so here. I think it's more it's more the weather that, that, that is the issue. We have a little bit of that here, like 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 everyone else does. That we you know we have to keep an eye on, particularly around around harvest. But it's not you know there, there are other factors we we need to be keeping keeping an eye on on a, on a bit more. It's you know it's the it's the sunshine that you know that yeah. if, if we are struggling, it's the sunshine that we're lacking and the, the you know and too much rainfall, but. You know, even in difficult years like we had last year, which you know was with everything all in, was you know one of the most difficult in the last twenty years. There's still some fantastic wines, both still and sparkling, that were able they're able to be made because of the advances in um, the wine making and the, the the clonal selection and the way you know the the attention to detail that the top English wineries are, are putting in now, even in difficult years with with, with low yields. You know the quality of the wines is is, is still fantastic. We've made some of our best still wines mm. from from 2021 that I, that I've tasted. So you know, even in difficult years, we're producing really high quality wines. Yeah, very good. Uh, and I also noticed on the uh, website that you all you also do uh, beer and cider. Is that affiliated with uh, Balfour? It says Jake's beer. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so we're 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 based on a, an estate called Hushies Estate, which is a beautiful 400-acre mm. estate. We're 45 minutes on the train from London. So, you know, one of the exciting things about English wine is our proximity to London. You know, you can come to London, you can come to our vineyards within an hour mm-hmm. from a busy. Oh, I think we disconnected. Actually, it looks like we disconnected. Okay. Well, across the pond, somebody pulled the plug. We're still live. Uh, we were talking with uh, Adam Williams from uh, Balfour Winery in uh, United Kingdom. Things happen, and uh, hopefully he'll he'll get back on here. He had a a long phone number. I don't know if I could dial that from here, <laughs> and uh, still haven't heard from uh, Ron. Um, <clears throat> I sent a message to him. Not sure what happened to Ron. Uh, Adam, hopefully you can uh, call back in, and we'll continue where we where we left off. Uh, this is the part where I could play some music. <laughs> Let's see if he calls back in the next couple of minutes. I did not uh, did not I did not touch the buttons. I was looking at something else, but uh, and then I go, but all of a sudden he, he stopped uh, mid sentence and. That was it. Um, So we'll see if he calls us back, uh, realizes he's uh, got cut off for some reason. And uh, could could have been a connection or something. I don't don't know. Um, We were talking with Adam Williams. Uh, He's the sales director at Balfour Winery uh, located. Hold on a second. I had a long address. Uh, Five Oak Lane in Staplehurst, Tonbridge, uh, United Kingdom. And he says it's in Kent, and it's about a 45-minute train ride from London on a 400-acre estate. So uh, hopefully he calls back in. This would be uh, this would not be cool. Um, and we're still waiting for Ron. Let's go, Ron. We could play some music here. What do we all want to hear? Taking your request right now. <laughs> Come on, Ron. Adam, Adam, call back. I don't know what happened. We got disconnected. Oh, boy. I don't know. Maybe he had another call or something. It could have happened as well. Uh, it's one twenty-three p.m. in the afternoon now in London and uh, 8.23 p.m. local time here. And uh, we were talking... Uh, about 20 minutes with uh, Adam, and uh, who was in the United Kingdom, and all of a sudden got disconnected. Not sure what happened there. Maybe he had another call. Maybe something else came up. Not sure. <clears throat> uh, write a note here. 
I'm still logging everything that happens on the show and uh, have not heard back from Ron either. So uh, let's see if we can hang on for a little bit and see if uh, we find out what happened to uh, Adam. <clears throat> Dang, I should should try to sell ad space if you like to uh <laughs> purchase this purchase this moment of silence <laughs> for an advertisement. Please do so. <laughs> uh Balfour Wines, uh Balfour Winery, uh if you go to the website it's Balfour B A L F O U R Winery dot com a uh, very very nice website and it does uh i like the over overview video on the uh, top of the page uh, near the header which is uh, really cool and uh part of what's uh hush heath estate uh we were just getting ready to to talk about their beers and uh whatever what they're doing as well there so uh and then we got uh, disconnected located uh, five oak lane staplehurst kent uh in the uk and it is one twenty-five p.m. There, we got disconnected from Adam. Some reason I'm not sure, but uh, you go to their website and click on shop at the very top, and you'll see all their products. Um, they actually have a port. Wow, I didn't even just saw that. It's like the first first wine up there. It's a port. Interesting. Um, a Brut Rosé. Uh, they have Blanc de Blancs and. Uh, Quite a quite a good selection here for sure. Pinot Noir. Um, I was going to ask also about uh, their uh, distribution and shipping, and we didn't get that far. Uh, we got disconnected for some reason. I don't know if it was uh, maybe Blog Talk Radio or if it was uh, on his end. Maybe he had a call. I don't know. Uh, check the check the studio here no nope, still shows it um, no connection we're still on live on YouTube and on our Facebook page and um, just waiting to see if Adam reconnects here uh, give him a few more minutes um, to find out what's uh, what happened for some reason I don't know what's going on but uh, if you go to their website balfourwinery.com click on shop you can see the uh the different wines that they offer and uh, um decently priced I, th I think i think they're they're very uh reasonable affordable and um we were just getting to uh going to talk about their beer and cider and we got disconnected somewhere i don't see him reconnecting here uh also have not heard from ron this morning uh we did have some major storms run through yesterday evening uh, kind of late in the in the evening and uh hopefully that was not um he was not affected by that but he's he's uh he's out for let me put uh change that um <laughs> there we go host mike yeah this is the first uh let's see what else i'll go back into some of Go back to their website here. <clears throat> they make uh, Balfour Winery make is making over four hundred thousand bottles of still and sparkling wines each year, and is uh, one of England's most respected of and, and renowned wineries, combining world class winemaking with a spirit of innovation. And that is from their About Us page on the website. Um, I'm speaking because uh somewhere we lost uh adam and uh if he can rejoin the the uh call that'd be great um if not i'll just uh, try and wing it and for a few more minutes um i wanted to talk about distribution if um uh, if there was a way to uh to get the wines here in the states or if it's strictly there i'm not sure what their laws are uh but there's some fantastic photos of the winery the estate uh, hush uh, hold on a second. It was Hush Heath Estate, and there's some uh, really, really nice uh, photos there uh, of the estate. And uh, he says they're a 45-minute train ride from London um, in Kent, and uh, just a really, really beautiful area. 
and uh, I believe they do um, wine tasting. Um, they have a membership, and uh, let's see what they have as far as uh, hotels. Um, yeah, there you go. There's uh, they offer some some information about uh, different pubs and hotels on the website as well. Um, yeah, there's some some good information on the website. So if you get a chance, visit Balfour Winery on the web. Uh, Balfour B A L F O U R Winery dot com and uh check him out for more information um still trying to see if uh if he's going to rejoin us i'll give him a couple more minutes uh and we'll see what uh what happens um <clears throat> we were talking about eight twenty, just getting into the beers and wines and uh next thing i know is it was quiet and i looked up and it said uh, the call was disconnected so i don't know if it was his end Maybe he had something else go on or if it was our end, but uh, just trying to talk there. Um, let's see where we're at here. They are members of the Wine Garden of England and accredited Gold Award 2018 by Visit England. Well, that's good. That's, yeah. Um, definitely need to make plans to visit there. Uh, let's see. What else? I'm trying to give you some more information on as much as I can. Um, so it says they uh, had the first harvest in 2004 with uh, 10,000 bottles of Balfour Brut Rosé and uh, won a gold medal at the International Wine Challenge in 2007, which uh, put Balfour Winery officially on the wine map. And um, it talks about the uh, Balfour Lynn family. Um, and uh, Hush Heath Estate has been part of the Balfour Lynn family for three generations. And um, the uh, Richard and Leslie purchased a 400-acre farmland attached to Huth, uh, Hush Heath Estate that uh, the Balfour Winery story uh, began. And um, just reading this off the website, folks, <laughs> Try to, uh, get some time in here and uh, see if he can, if he rejoins us. I don't see him back on here. Um, we were hoping Adam Williams would uh, rejoin the call, but uh, maybe something came up. Um, and let's see, uh, they uh, are leading the way for English wine for sure. They've won some uh, recent awards uh a first for English red wines at the uh, IWC uh, had awarded uh, the Red Miller, the National English uh, Red Trophy. And uh, this is the first time in the competition's 36-year history that an English red wine has received uh, prestigious accolades and awards. They have uh, quite a few. Uh, they're silver, uh, decanter, gold. Um, they've got a wine and spirit competition award. Uh, quite a few there. So... Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely something to look for. And I, I don't know if it's available here, but um, we're going to try and find out. We were talking with the sales director of Balfour uh, Hush Estate, Hush Heath Estate, Adam Williams, who is in um, the UK in uh, Kent. And uh, about eight twenty or so, he, uh, about twelve minutes ago, he got <clears throat> somewhere got disconnected. I wasn't touching any buttons or anything. And we got disconnected. So, well, that's odd now. Yeah, there it goes. So, I thought I'd wait for him a, a minute or two and see what um, they do offer tours. You can, uh, uh, along with the wines, um, award <laughs> world class English wines, beers, and ciders. Uh, you can also visit uh, some of the most vibrant uh, flora and fauna in the area for uh, nature and wine lovers alike. The estate offers an unprecedented, uh, unparalleled experience. <clears throat> you can take a self-guided stroll through the beautiful vineyards, apple orchards, and ancient oak woodlands, or join an expert-led tour and tasting experience. Ooh, those are always fun. And um, the full estate tour and tasting is available uh, April to October, so it is going on. And uh, it begins with an expert-led 
tour of the vineyards, apple orchards, ancient woodlands, and wildflower uh, meadows. And uh, guests will learn about the winery and discover the winemaking process from grape to glass, which is always interesting. People think you, you go into the store and grab a bottle and that's all it is. It's a process. And um, the tour is followed by a guided tasting of six Balfour wines. And um, on Saturday and Sunday, the tour includes a visit to the state of the art winery will, <laughs> where guests will be shown the winemaking and production techniques used for our still and sparkling wines. Um, you will also midweek, you will enjoy a short film featuring head winemaker um, as he talks through the winemaking process used by Balfour Winery. So quite a bit. There's there's a really, really some cool stuff there at Balfour for sure. Um, they also have cellar door tasting masterclass and um, you get... Uh, uh, knowledgeable tour guides and a, a fun and relaxed tasting of six ball four wines and you'll learn the technique of wine tasting uh without all the uh, bravado stuff uh, then there's also an art and wine evening it's the third wednesday of the month um and you you do need to book this by the way and uh, so that that sounds like a, another uh, another cool thing so um wine and dine experience and we're kind of moving up here on on what uh, is being offered and uh this is a private transfer from the martin train station huh interesting so let's see let me go back to the studio see if there's anybody hanging there nope i don't see that and you can do a self-guided tour which is free and it's available all year round and no booking is required as i mentioned before uh what you do is you pick up a map from the cellar door and explore the picturesque estate at your own pace uh with two designated uh, uh oh, routes to choose from you can enjoy tranquility and stillness as you stroll through beautiful vineyards apple orchards wildflower meadows and ancient oak woodlands uh, so you can do that uh, for free all year round. And there's also a cellar door self-tutored tasting all year round. And uh, there's just a nominal fee for that. But uh, it'll give you an introduction to the portfolio at Balfour Wines with uh, where you can sample three selected wines. And, um, yeah, you can also uh, uh, credit some of that to a purchase uh, over $20 from the retail shop. So quite a bit to do there for sure at um, Balfour Winery. And, um, uh, I don't, uh, let's see, we can, uh, they do have, uh, you can do dining as well. Um, take in the amazing views uh, while you enjoy the great food and, uh, relax in the uh, breathtaking countryside. Uh, and you look at the photos and it's, it's very inviting. You definitely want to want to check that out, but, uh, they do have, uh, food platters, um, and different dining, um, uh, options there. So, uh, definitely check that out for more information go to balfourwinery.com that's b-a-l-f-o-u-r winery.com and uh check it out and see what uh what they have to offer that's balfour hush heath estate and uh one last time we were talking with adam williams <clears throat> on until about eight twenty. he was talking about uh it was a 400 acre estate, uh, 400 mile or 400 minute, 45 minute train ride from London. Wow, I'll get this. It's my own writing too, and I can't read it. 45 minute train ride from London, and about 8:20, uh, some somewhere we got disconnected, and uh, haven't had him come back on in uh, 17 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably close the show here, and uh, we'll see if we can. Uh, what happened there i'm not sure where ron went but um tried messaging him we did have some major storms last night uh go through uh, mostly on where ron is he's on the uh, west coast of florida and uh had some major storms run through there and uh hope he's okay i uh, have not heard anything yet from him and um oh, let me see if there's any additional here um haven't heard from him, so we'll try and touch base with him in a little bit and see what what happened. Hope he's hope everything's all right there with Ron, and um, but like I said, the storms came through and uh, the power went out here in Central Florida a couple of times, but it wasn't uh, anything lengthy. Um, I came in here at the usual time, fifteen minutes before the show, and he was not here. So um, 
went ahead and started the show a couple of minutes late because uh, I'm not the one who normally starts the show <laughs> and uh, decided to go that route and uh, start the start with Adam Williams, the sales director at Ball Four Hush Heath Estate, uh, which is located in uh, Kent, uh, United Kingdom. So uh, we were talking about that. Uh, no connections there. So we'll uh, see if we can do another live show on Thursday. Uh, this Thursday would be May the 5th. We'll try another <clears throat> live show with Ron on Thursday. We'll see what happened with him and, uh, you know, get you updated that way. And uh, my apologies to uh, Adam Williams with Ball Four. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, like I said, uh, disconnected at uh, 820 a.m. He may have had another call, uh, some other issue. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't something that we did uh knowingly on this end unless it was uh blog talk radio saying uh something but uh he was on had to had everything going um all right i'm going to go ahead and close the show here so i want to thank everybody for tuning in on this uh impromptu sort of um <laughs> live show on a sunday it is uh almost 8 40 a.m eastern time uh, we'll go ahead and close the show, and I want to uh, thank you all. Have a great uh, rest of the day and a good week ahead, and uh, hopefully we'll have Ron here next week on uh, this Thursday on the show. So we'll find out what happened and uh, let you know. Uh, anything else? I don't see anything in anybody in chat. We'll go ahead and uh, close it out, and uh, you all have a great Sunday, and thank you. And, uh, Adam, if you're out there uh, somehow listening to the end of this, um, Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And I wish we could have talked a little bit longer and and, uh, gotten to know more about uh, um, Balfour Winery. For those of you out there uh, want to tune in or or go check out Balfour Winery, go to balfourwinery.com on the internet, B-A-L-F-O-U-R, winery.com for more information. Okay? We'll see you all Thursday. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. (laughs) Bye. This concludes tonight's broadcast of All About Wine with your host, Ron. For show information, links to All About Wine on Twitter and Facebook, or to be a guest on this show, visit the show website at www.allaboutwinebtr.com. Archive shows are available for download on iTunes or on our show page at blogtalkradio.com forward slash allaboutwine. Thank you for listening. Drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time on All About Wine.